Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about the developmental sections of your brain. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about your hindbrain, midbrain, and forebrain. When I say developmental sections of your brain, I mean the three different sections of your brain that developed over a massive amount of time as we humans became more complex living organisms. In your brain, the most basic areas are closer to your spinal column, and as they radiate out, they get more and more complex. Let's take a look at all three sections so you can see what I mean. What if you were going about your regular day and then all of a sudden you forgot how to blink? <laughs> Blinking is such a basic part of what you do that you normally don't even notice doing it. A lot of our really basic don't think about them kinds of abilities are all controlled by a part of our brain called the hindbrain or the rhombencephalon. Your hindbrain controls most of the things our bodies do automatically, like breathing, coughing, sneezing. It even controls a lot of our basic balance and motor functions. And when I say basic, I mean really basic. The hindbrain is chronologically the oldest part of our brain. And that means it's really similar to the same brain area in other animals like reptiles. The second brain area to evolve in our mammalian lineage was the midbrain or mesencephalon. The midbrain controls some of our fine motor skills and plays a part in pupil dilation and in regulating our body temperature. But it's mostly known for being the part of the brain that controls when we sleep. The midbrain is where you'll find the reticular formation that controls our sleep-wake cycle. The last part of the human brain to evolve is the forebrain or prosencephalon. The forebrain is actually the part of the brain most of us think about when we think about a brain. It's the part of the brain on the top with all of the bumps and grooves. The forebrain was the last area of our brains to develop, and it controls a lot of the things that we have to actively think about doing. Things like purposefully moving or talking. It also is where we process our emotions and more abstract thoughts. The forebrain is the biggest part of your brain. It's more than just those two big hemispheres. You've probably heard of some of the other structures around and underneath the hemispheres, just like the thalamus and the hypothalamus, which are involved in processing sensory information and regulating our blood pressure. When talking about the brain, one key thing to remember is that no one region does everything on its own. For instance, while the midbrain is known for the sleep-wake cycle, the hypothalamus and the forebrain and parts of the hindbrain also contribute to successful sleep. Brain areas usually need to work together to accomplish tasks. Using your brain works just like using any other part of your body. Think about picking up a pen. Your hand, your fingers, your arm, they all need to work together. Even though you probably think of your fingers as doing most of the work, if your arm was in a cast, it would be really hard to pick up that pen. The same principle applies to your brain. While one area of the brain might contribute more to a certain task, there's still a lot of other areas involved. If you love your brain, or if you want to learn more about the science of psychology, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos. And until next time, Keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye. Hindbrain check. Good. It's good.